Okay, welcome to the fifth session of um, the machine learning series, um, workshop series, uh, hosted by Girls Computing League. So last week, uh, we learned about um, an intro to neural networks, uh, what they are, um, and then examples of different neural networks like CNN and RNNs. Today, we're going to be introducing a new concept to you, which is called transfer learning. And today, we're going to be um, incorporating like some CNNs into the uh, concepts we're going to be learning for today. So what is transfer learning? So transfer learning is a research problem in machine learning. And basically what it does is, is its focus is on uh, storing knowledge, gained solving one problem, and applying that knowledge to a different but similar problem. So that basically means taking uh, knowledge um, from one problem, one previously learned problem, and applying that knowledge and information to solve another uh, problem. So there are usually two approaches to try and identify a related task with an abundant amount of data. And the first one is the developed model approach. And the second one is the pre-trained model approach. So we're going to be going into more detail into these two um, approaches uh, later. But uh, the developed model approach is developing a model for the task and reusing it for your own problem. And the pre-trained model approach is using a model someone else has already made, and built, and pre-trained as a starting point for your own model. So why is transfer learning useful? So tr transfer learning is useful because it helps reuse or transfer information from previously learned tasks to the learning of new ones. And that basically means um, what I said earlier, um, taking information from one task and applying it to another uh, task. Um, and it has the power to improve the efficiency of a reinforcement learning agent. So some problems do not have an abundant source of data, which means a lot, a lot of data. So transfer learning can help develop skillful models for those kinds of problems and um, get a desired output. So um, this is kind of related to problems like multitask learning or concept trip, uh, uh, concept trip. So multitask learning is basically taking um, a couple of different tasks and then combining it and passing it through shared layers to uh, get outputs from all those uh, different tasks. And concept drift is like taking an idea from one time period and applying the same knowledge gained from that idea to another um, problem from a different time period. So. Now we're gonna be learning a new concept in transfer learning, inductive learning versus inductive transfer. So inductive learning is basically taking knowledge, as you can see in this picture right here, um, a depiction of inductive learning and inductive transfer. This bubble right here has all the knowledge gained from only one task. So let's just take uh, an easy example such as classifying cats and dogs. So this whole uh, bubble is filled with data on uh, classifying cats. So suppose you feed a neural network an image of a cat, it will classify that image as a cat. But if you feed it an image of a dog, it's going to classify it as um, it's either going to give an error or classify it as something um, as a cat or just not classify it at all. So inductive transfer, now we're going to introduce inductive transfer. That's basically uh, going to put another bubble of full of knowledge and information on dogs 
And when you feed an image of cat, it's going to classify it as a cat. But when you feed it an image of a dog, it's going to classify it as a dog. So that's the basic concept of inductive transfer. And you can use it for any number of classes you want. So first you want to, next uh, time you want to classify um, from the top of my head, I can get hamsters. So um, you put another, another bubble full of knowledge on top of that. And now it's not only classify cats and dogs, but it can classify ca cats, dogs, and hamsters. So basically it doesn't search only for information in the first bubble behind this, but it also uh, searches for, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this whole bubble, it not only searches for information here, but also searches for information over here. So that's the basics of um, inductive uh, learning versus inductive transfer. So how do we use transfer learning? Now we get into, um, into depth on the two approaches I explained before, the developed model approach and the pre-trained model approach. So the developed model approach is basically developing a model, reusing that model for another task of interest, and then maintaining that model. So the first step in the developed model approach is basically to select the source task, which means the modeling problem with an abundance of data where there's a relationship between the input and data, the output data, and maybe the concepts learned during the mapping from the input to the output data. So um, the next step for um, the developed model approach. Um, if you guys think I'm going too fast on um, these slides, uh, then just let me know in the chat. Um, so yeah, just let me know in the chat. Uh, so yeah, there was I, the, the developed source model. Um, so that's the second step. So you basically have to develop a model for the first task and it has to be much more complicated and complex model than just a naive model, like um, a simple model. Um, it has to be much more complicated so that not only can you use it for this step, but you can also use it for the next step. And I'm gonna be explaining what the next step is. But yeah, that's, um, that's why it's called the developed model approach. You're developing a model and then you're uh, uh, performing some other tasks in order to ensure that um, uh, your model is uh, successful and accurate. So after you develop the source model, you can now reuse that model um, to, um, you can reuse that model uh, in order to use it as a starting point for your own model on the second task of interest. So basically what you did now was you developed the model now you use that model on one task, and now you're gonna use that, uh, you're gonna make another model using parts of that model or um, all of that model to um, uh, use it in the second task of interest. So again, going back to our cats versus dogs example. So suppose you, um, you develop a source model for classifying cats, then you can use um, then uh, you can use that same model to take parts of that model or all of that model in order to apply it to the second task of interest. So uh, in this case, it's going to be dogs. So uh, now it can not only classify cats, it can also classify dogs. And then if you want it to uh, classify other cats, hamsters and all. So um, those are the three main steps. And after that, uh, your model is not uh, really done. You need to, needs to be adapted, maintained, refined. So, um, the, so that the input and output data there is available for, uh, other tasks of interest. So that's where it hamsters come in. It needs to be, uh, uh fine tuned, uh, which you're going to be learning next lesson. Um, how to fine tune models. Um, it needs to be uh, fine tuned in order to uh, up produce results for other uh, given data sets. 
So that is the developed model approach. Um, if you have any questions about the developed model approach, I'll just pause and take any questions uh, for now. Um, just type it in chat or you could unmute and say something. No one has any questions about what I covered so far? It's okay if you don't have any questions. I just want to make sure that you learn, uh, you understood whatever I spoke just now because I spoke pretty fast, so yeah. Okay, if you don't have any questions or you might have a question, uh, and you're still typing it, I'll answer it at the end um, of the lesson. So um, the pre-trained model approach. So this uh, approach is, the, um, is very common in the field of deep learning. So the, step, the first step is to select the source model. If you notice in the developed model approach, you have to select your problem, your resource task. But now uh, you don't need uh, to develop a model as you're reusing uh, the model and fine tuning it. You can just select another, another model um, that was pre trained and built by someone else. And you uh, can choose that for your um, for uh, applying transfer learning. And um, just as a side note, many research institutions um, release um, different models on um, very large and complex data sets that may be included in um, in a group of candidate models uh, from you, which you can choose from. So uh, there are many different models, um, many um, institutions have created. Um, uh, you, we use TensorFlow, so there are many models on that too, and we're gonna be using it for our coding example today. So. Um, after we selected our source model, we're going to be reusing that model um, as the starting point for the model on the second task of interest, the model you want to uh, make. And again, this may involve using all or um, parts of the model. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, and then after that, um, you can fine tune the model because the model needs to be adapted refined, maintained on the um, input data, output data pair um, available for that uh, task. Um, I'm just gonna pause quickly for any questions on the pre-trained model approach. Okay, if you don't have any questions, I'll move on. Okay, I think I see some. Um, so I haven't really uh, used any um, like models from other um, sources. Um, I know there many other mo models um, out there. Um, I've seen some on uh, this website called RoboFlow, that's AI. Um, I've seen some, um, yeah, I've seen some on other uh, different websites, but uh, I mostly use TensorFlow uh, models. At least I haven't used any other, but surely there are other AI institutions out there that uh, develop um, such models. Um, I think um, H2O.AI, which is um, an AI company, um, uses um, uh, uh, builds uh, pre trained models and all. Um, yeah, so if any of the other mentors want to pitch in of uh, any other um, pre-trained models out there. 
uh, and is OpenCV a machine learning model? Um, I haven't checked that out. Uh, I'm pretty sure it might be. Um, does anyone want to, um, any of the mentors want to answer that? Can you repeat the question? Um, is OpenCV a, a machine learning model? Yeah, I'm pretty sure OpenCV is a machine learning model because I've seen OpenCV get used in like, actually, I wouldn't say it's exactly a machine learning model, but it like does a great job using APIs of like third party things such as like Google Maps and stuff. But I'm pretty sure you could use it in some instances in a machine learning model, but you'll have to do more research on that. Yeah. And any other um, models you can think of? I know um, there's some, the model we're going to be using for the coding aspect of um, this uh, this session, it's called Mobile V2Net. So uh, that's another um, machine learning model. And I'm going to be going over more models um, in this presentation, of some pre-trained convolutional uh, neural networks, but anyone else can think of them. Okay, um, sorry, um, I was muted. So uh, what I said was just, um, I would suggest you research it on your own. I know I've seen plenty of models out there, but just um, it doesn't come to the top of my head right now. Um, so yeah, just, uh, just research some, maybe you could use some for other projects and all. Uh, the one which we're gonna be using for this, uh, lesson is going to be mobile v2net there are also other pre-trained models uh, we're going to be covering in this presentation uh pre-trained cnns so yeah but just uh try looking on it for on your own so yeah so when do we use transfer learning so transfer learning is an optimization if in case you don't know what that means it's only used when it, where it is best or most effective, most efficient and all. And three possible benefits of um, transfer learning is if you plot this on like a linear chart, you see on this first, uh, this uh, linear chart right here, you see the um, slope of a model, um, uh, of a model using uh, transfer learning and not using transfer learning. So if you see in this model right here, as training occurs, the first model, which is not using transfer learning, um, has a low performance rate. And the second model has a much higher uh, uh, performance uh, start, I meant. Uh, so this has a low performance start, this has a much higher performance start. And it has a much higher uh, performance uh, slope you see over here, it's much more curved over here and much less curved, more like a line over here. And it has a higher asymptote. If you don't know what an asymptote is, it's basically a line curve that looks like it's about to reach like a given, uh, like a line, um, but it's, it actually doesn't. So if you see over here, it has a much higher asymptote than this. This almost looks like it's going in a straight line. So those are the three possible benefits of um, transfer learning. So now, as I said before, we're going to be going over some pre-trained models uh, that are out there. Um, so the first uh, model is a pre-trained CNN, uh, AlexNet. It uh, was um, 
designed by Alex Krzyzewski, uh, and he and his colleagues uh, participated in the 2012 ImageNet uh, large-scale visual recognition challenge. And um, his model um, got a top five error of 15.3%. And this is 10 more, 10% uh, more than the runner-up. So the reason that um, it was so successful, it got, he won that um, challenge was because the depth of the model was essential for its high performance. But at that time, um, it wasn't, um, it was really computationally expensive um, to create a, something uh, so um, so deep uh, like the AlexNet. So this was like one of the first introductions of GPUs, which are graphic processing units. Usually uh, when um, during the 1980s uh, to 2000s, they usually use um, CPUs, which are central processing units. Those were pretty fast, but GPUs were much faster than those. And now um, GPUs um, mostly power everything, like from even Google Colab, uh, it has a free GPU on its cloud. So um, Google Colab is um, powered using uh, GPUs. So that those were one of the first introductions of a graphics processing units. And AlexNet consisted of five convolutional layers and three fully connected layers. And it's um, uh, two more interesting fun facts. It's uh, considered one of the most influential papers in the AI world. And it was cited more than 61,000 times. The second pre-trained model is another CNN. All these, um, the rest of the models I'm going to be going through are all going to be CNNs. So ResNet is a residual, residual neural network that builds on constructs from pyramidal cells of the cerebral cortex. So this is a bunch of information I'm just throwing at you. So what this means is it's basically, um, the ResNet is kind of structured like the human brain. It basically builds on the artificial pyramidal cells from um, an artificial uh, cerebral cortex. Um, that's a part of your uh, brain. And basically what this does is it utilizes shortcuts to jump over layers. So before the traditional feed uh, forward neural network, was just feeding in information. And that information, um, that input goes through each single layer. And then until it goes, uh, until it gives a certain output. So that would take a lot of time. So what ResNet did is it utilized shortcuts to jump over layers like a double or triple shortcuts that sometimes implemented in their models. And basically, this would give an accurate uh, prediction. At the same time, it would um, become much faster, much quicker, much easier to use. And the ResNet was also known as Highway Net. So, Highway Net, um, it was named like this because if you look at the highway, uh, before there were only local roads which could. Uh, um, which you could tra travel to reach your destination. But um, now that we have the highway, uh, um, we can reach our destination much quicker and easier and to take us to the uh, same destination as we would have done uh, if we had traveled the local road. So uh, that's why it's called highway notes too. So Lenet 5. Lenet 5 was a CNN that was proposed by Yan Likun and his colleagues in 1998. And Yan Likun is considered a father of like AI technology and stuff like that. Um, and he applied a different a random algorithm with a CNN to recognize handwritten zip code numbers provided by the US Postal Service. He also used 
um, the CNN to um, apply to identify either identifying handwritten digits. So these models performed very well with an error rate of 1% and a rejection rate of 9%. So um, that's really good for a model. And um, yeah, it performed really well until um, um, ElectNet came in 2012. And it's still, um, it's not used as widely as much as um, ElectNet, but it's still a considered like the, found, the like foundation of different of other models that came after it, like ElectNet. ElectNet used Lent 5 as the foundation and built on that. So the final uh, model I'm going to be telling you about today is called VGG19. So VGG19 is um, stands for the Visual Geometry Group. And um, there was a previous model called VGG16, and it was made in 2016. And as you can guess, this model was made in 2019, very fairly recently. And it was proposed by two scientists at Oxford University. And it used the ImageNet data set to achieve a 92.7% top five test accuracy. So that's um, a really good um, um, accuracy for a model like VGG19. Okay, um, if you have any questions, just let me know right now. Um, yeah, any questions you have? Otherwise, we can move on to the code now that you learned the concepts. Okay, no one has any questions. Okay, so we're going to be playing a Kahoot based on the concepts you learned right now. Okay, so just type this, yeah, pin. Okay, is anyone else going to join?
Uh, there are six more players that need to uh, join. Actually, um, seven. Okay, um, yeah, seven more players need to join. Um, so yeah, I'll be starting in two more minutes. So yeah, just join before that. Okay, never mind. sorry. Um, four uh, people need to join. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to be starting now. Okay, um, so yeah, um, transfer learning is part of AI, that's true, but um, I meant that as allowing machi machines to become more accurate at predicting at outcomes, which is machine learning, it's not, um, transfer learning is part of machine learning, it's not um, like um, vice versa, so yeah, that's wrong. So uh, yeah, it focuses on storing knowledge, uh, solving one problem and applying it to another. another. Okay, um, everyone pick the developed model approach, that's good. Um, yeah, you could also pick a pre-trained model. So yeah, both those answers are correct. Um, the developed program approach is, I didn't explain that, so yeah, uh, um, that's not part of uh, transfer learning.
Okay. Yeah. So um, this was a mixed one. Um, so yeah, the reason transfer learning is useful is because some problems do not have an, uh, a lot of data. So um, a transfer learning can help develop um, skillful models for those kind of um, kinds of uh, problems. And um, has the power to predict different outcomes is a more of machine learning related. Um, not one of the fastest neural networks designed. Um, there are other neural networks that use transfer learning that um, are, um, are some of the fastest neural networks. But no, TL is more of a concept. It's not a neural network. Um, so, um, TL uses, um, TL, um, so there are some pre-trained models that use TL as a concept to make their uh, neural networks faster. Okay, so, so far we have Nitya, Shritan, and Aditi in the lead. Um, so, yeah, great job. Okay, um, great job. Um, TL is related to problems like multitask learning and concept drift. Um, if you don't know, if you don't remember what they are, multitask learning is taking different tasks and feeding them for to uh, shared, shared layers in order to um, predict an outcome. And the concept drift is taking one idea from one time period and applying the, the knowledge to another idea from another time period. So, um, yeah, most people got it right. So that's great. Okay, Shritan took the lead. lead. Um, yeah, great job. Great job, everyone got this right. Yeah, um, you select the problem, as I said before, selected based on the input data you're given, the output data you're given, and the concepts learned during the mapping of the input to the output data. Good job. Um, it's um, the three benefits are a higher start, slope, and an asymptote. Uh, for those of you with other answers, uh, it's not ha a higher performance skill and training. Um, training really doesn't um, matter when it comes to um, how good uh, your transfer learning model is. So it's just a training model and then uh, sees how good your performance is, um, I mean, how good your start is, how good your slope is, and how good your asymptote is based, um, um, like based on like the performance of those categories. And um, 
yeah, um, it doesn't matter about whether your models are big or small for uh, uh, TL. It matters mostly about the success and accuracy, the higher start, higher slope, and higher asymptote. And yeah, um, it doesn't matter about higher rates either. Good job, Shritan. He has um, the highest answer rate of seven. Okay, um, great job. Yeah, TL is an optimization. So basically, um, if you don't remember what that means, it means basically TL is used only where it is most um, effective or it is uh, the best possible way, a possible way of solving that problem. So um, yeah, it is an optimization. Okay, yeah, um, LexNet won the uh, visual uh, recognition challenge. This is just, um, you, you don't have to uh, know that's like, it just, I just asked it as a question, as you could see or hear. It participated in the 2012 ImageNet recognition challenge. So yeah, I just gave it as a fun question. Okay, so we have Shritan, Aditi, uh, Nitya, Shreya, and Kabalita um, in the lead. So, um, yeah. Great job. Yep, great job. Um, the depth was essential and computationally expensive. I spelled that wrong accidentally, computationally. It's spelled um, P-O-M-P-U-T-I-O-N-K-L-L-Y. Um, and it was made feasible with uh, GPUs. Um, GPUs provided um, it um, uh, its depth and it uh, was uh, it wasn't very expensive, not a uh, CD. So yeah, if you accidentally picked that, then I get it. Um, Cause yeah, sometimes you would accidentally pick it. Okay, great. Treya has uh, an answer streak of three. Great job. Okay, great job. Yeah, by the way, I um, put uh, 11,000 two different uh, times just um, to kind of trick. So yeah, great job, you and Paul. Okay, um, yeah, so, yeah, yellow is correct. Uh, it's a neural network um, that builds on the constructs from pyramidal cells of the cerebral, uh, cerebral cortex. Um, and three of you put 
uh, an algorithm with the CNN that was used to identify handwritten zip code numbers. That's Leonard Pine. So ResNet is um, the one that builds some constructs from pyramidal cells from the cerebral cortex. And Leonard 5 was um, using a different algorithm with the CNN to recognize handwritten zip code numbers. Yep, um, they utilize shortcuts to jump over layers. Um, no, um, IV nets are different from feed forward neural networks. Um, the traditional ones are basically feeding in an input and then that input has to go through each layer until it gets to the output. That's fine, but it takes um, more time. It's not that quick and efficient. So what uh, ResNet did is it utilized shortcuts to jump over layers instead of um, just going through each layer. And it still got um, a much more successful and accurate output. At the same time, it um, was much more quicker and efficient. That's why it's usually referred to as highway nets. Um, highways are much more uh, quicker and efficient to get to your exact same distance as what would you, uh, what you would do if you traveled by local roads. Okay, great job. Last question. Okay, um, this was, um, yeah, BGG19 did achieve a 92.7% top five test accuracy with the ImageNet data set, as you could see here, right here. So yeah. Okay, uh, great job for Shritan in first place, Nitya in second, Aditi in third, and to the run runner-ups, uh, Shreya and Kavalida. Okay, um, great job, uh, everyone. Um, now that um, we've uh, gone through a Kahoot and um, uh, gone through the concepts of transfer learning. Um, we're going to be going over um, a coding aspect of uh, transfer learning. So um, you can just uh, lo uh, look through this. I'm just going to be explaining what, um, like the uh, what the lines of code um, do, and um, this week I'm going to be giving you homework. I'm going to be, I posted a, I posted some homework in um, the session five folder, uh, in um, this folder right here. And um, it's the student version for this um, 
transfer learning with top um, IP uh, uh, notebook. So I just deleted a couple of lines and now you're going to be writing those lines. Uh, I'm just, just going to be giving you a, a couple of hints and you're going to be writing those lines in. And um, I'm not going to be checking anything. I'm going to be giving you the um, answers uh, later on. So just uh, fill that out to your, um, uh, as best as you can. And yeah. So let's get started with this. Okay, so we're going to be doing some simple transfer learning, not, nothing too complicated. Um, and the first uh, couple things we need to do are setting up our um, libraries, uh, some uh, pip installing them if you want to, um, uh, downloading our classifier, running the classifier on a single image and decoding those predictions. So that's a lot right there. We're gonna, just gonna be going step by step. So let's first import our libraries. So we're gonna be using for this example, matplotlib and tensorflow, matplotlib for some visual graphs we're gonna be using uh, that library for, and we're gonna be using some TensorFlow functions. So we can just run this. Okay, uh, we have our um, libraries imported. And now the second thing we're going to be doing is tip installing these two libraries called TensorFlow Hub and TensorFlow Datasets. Uh, TensorFlow Datasets, we're going to be downloading a data set from here. Uh, and TensorFlow Hub, we're going to be downloading some functions from here. And then we're going to be importing um, TensorFlow Hub and TensorFlow.cares, uh, some layers from uh, TensorFlow.cares. So as you can see here, I already have the output requirement already satisfied and all um, that's when you do the pip install. So if you get that, uh, then that means you already have um, TensorFlow Hub and TensorFlow data sets installed. So um, now uh, if you don't get that, then that means um, uh, you pip installed um, TensorFlow Hub and this. So when you do this, you get your requirements, it's already satisfied. Okay, good. So now we have everything set up. We have all our, um, I mean, not everything, but we have all our libraries imported and installed. Now we're gonna be using an ImageNet uh, classifier. As I said before, the ImageNet uh, challenge, um, they had uh, their ElectNet one. We're going to be um, downloading that classifier. So first, we're going to be downloading uh, a URL. The URL is in uh, TensorFlow. So um, it's in this kind of uh, link here. You can also click this link right here or paste it. And we're just gonna run this classifier URL. Okay, so we download, um, we're just, okay, so now we successfully downloaded the classifier. And now we're gonna be running this classifier on a single image. Um, this is not transfer learning, we're gonna be starting, but um, we're just gonna be testing this um, classifier. So we're just gonna be testing this classifier on an image of Grace Hopper. If you don't know who she is, um, she's a leading like figure, a woman figure in um, computers and um, yeah, so. We're just gonna be downloading this um, image of her. Then we're gonna be um, getting our parameters for this image. As you can see, 224 pixels by 224 uh, pixels, uh, the images. Uh, we're just gonna be adding uh, another dimension 
and passing this image to the model so that the model can classify it. So as you can see here, we have a one comma 1001. So the 1001 is um, basically rating the probability of each class for this image. So um, yeah, let's, and using this, um, this code, these lines of code, we can get the class, the top class ID uh, found when we cast this image, um, the about image, the Grace Hopper image to the model. So now that we have all that ready, we can now decode the predictions. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna predict uh, what uh, the class name for this Grace Hopper image. So um, we're gonna be first downloading the data. We're gonna be fetching the ImageNet labels first. And now the second step we do is decoding the prediction. So what this line of code is gonna do is it's gonna turn the axis off. We're not, we don't want any axis for this uh, image right here. Um, it's gonna basically give the title of this, which is the prediction string, and then concatenate that with the predicted class name title for this image. So when you run this, you get the prediction as, uh, uh, the image prediction as prediction uh, colon military uniform. So now that we've just set up everything, we can apply some simple transfer learning now. So for this uh, kind of transfer learning, we're gonna be using the TensorFlow Flowers data set. And it's basically a data set which um, you can use to in order to classify uh, flowers such as daisies, roses, um, tulips, et cetera. Um, so, Let's uh, go ahead, download the data. Okay, so we downloaded the data. Um, now we're gonna be loading the data with um, this image generator. And as you can see here, it loaded all the data. It found 3,670 images belonging to five different classes. And we're just gonna see our image batch uh, shape and our label batch shape right here. The next step we're gonna be doing is running the classifier now on a batch of images of uh, flowers. So with uh, this code, we're gonna be um, uh, printing our parameters. Then we're gonna be predicting our class names in the form of an array. And then now we're gonna be checking how these predictions line up with our images in the image um, Flowers data set. So for here we have our uh, title image net predictions. We have our, our axis off um, and we have all the image uh, net predictions as you can see here. It, uh, some of these uh, predictions are wrong like um, as you can see here this is actually a sunflower, but it predicted it as a daisy. This is actually probably um, a daisy. I don't know what it is, uh, but uh, it predicted as a spider web. Uh, this is actually a daisy again, um, but it predicted this as a fly. So not all of these are correct, but we're gonna be training. Uh, we're gonna be downloading a model now in the next step, a headless model without um, a classifier um, head. So 
Uh, and then we're going to be training this model in the next couple of steps in order to, uh, um, for the model to predict uh, these um, images uh, correctly. So we're going to be downloading a feature extractor, which is um, just extracting some features and elim eliminating them in order to um, create new, uh, new features that are much more uh, effective, efficient, and useful. So let me just check something here. OK, so we do uh, downloaded the feature extractor. And we have to now create that feature extractor for uh, the um, data set we have. Um, and it returns a 1,280 length vector for each image, as you can see here, uh, 32 and uh, 1,280. So we're just going to read the variables for now in the uh, feature extractor um, layer so that um, the chain uh, is only modified in the new uh, layer, classifier layer. So now that we've done all this, uh, we're going to be at attaching a classification head. Um, before, our model didn't have any head. But now with this, we can um, attach the classification. Uh, we're getting ready to attach the classification head. We're just getting a summary of um, our parameters, the total parameters, um, the trainable ones, and the non-trainable ones. Um, and then we're just going to be getting our parameters from this. All right, so now we've attached our classification head. So um, the next step is going to be training the model. So this is by far the most important uh, part of um, any type of machine learning or artificial intelligence. It's actually training that model to now predict the outcomes. So we're going to be using the model.compile function to configure the training process and shape it um, into much and in a much easier way um, so that we get like um, our accuracy and our loss. Okay, um, now that we have that, um, to keep this example short, um, you, we're gonna only train it on just two epochs. Uh, you can train it on any number of epochs you uh, really want, but uh, just to keep it short, we're going to be training it on the um, two epochs. So we're going to be creating a class and a function. Uh, the class is collect batch stats, and we're going to be training the model. So while you, we train the model, just notice how the loss is decreasing and how the accuracy is increasing. Um, a model. Okay, so um, in this one, the loss decreased, and, but um, the accuracy also decreased. So that's not very good. Uh, let's just try one more time if we can get this to a much better level. Okay, um, so yeah, we have a 96% accuracy now, so that's pretty great. Um, 
So yeah, now that our training is successful, we just have to see how the model is making progress so that, uh, so that we can get it on like a visual graph. So we're gonna be creating um, this uh, uh, plot chart right here uh, to see our loss um, and our, based on our training steps. So as you can see here, our loss is pretty low. And now we're gonna be checking our accuracy. So, yeah, our accuracy is pretty high now. So let's check the predictions now. So we're gonna redo the plot from before. And we're first gonna be getting the ordered list of class names. So in this example, um, we're gonna be making it an array of daisy, dandelion, roses, sunflowers, and tulips. So we're gonna run this image best through the model and yeah, and convert the indices to class names. Um, yeah, so now that we have all that done, the final step we're gonna be doing is plotting this result now to check that our model predictions are um, um, accurate. Okay, now this is a really good accuracy for uh, this data set. It's only predicted one thing wrong. Um, this is not a band line. Um, but other than that, it's predicted, predicted everything correctly. So um, that's uh, great for this model. So um, now you built, um, you basically learned how to set up, um, download the image net classifier, run it on a single image, decode those predictions, then apply transfer learning to uh, the data set, and then um, download a headless model, attach a head to it, and then train that model, then uh, just double check the predictions and um, basically you, le you learn how to apply transfer learning now to the simple flower data set. So now you can do this to any uh, number of data sets on your own. Um, just take um, a data set. You can even um, take this model right here. Um, let's see, you can take this model and apply a new data set onto this. Maybe it doesn't have to be flower photos, maybe it can be your own data set. We haven't really taught you how to do that now, uh, but uh, you can just uh, search up some tutorials on maybe um, uh, Google and also that you can um, download your own data uh, onto, onto this model and uh, train it so that uh, you can use transfer learning for this. So, uh, yeah, great job. Um, now I'm going to be showing you something pretty simple. It's just going to be exporting your model, uh, exporting and saving it. So you just run this code to in order to export it. And as you can see here, you get it as a saved model. Now let's just check it again so that we don't get any errors or anything. You just reload it. Okay, so um, yeah, we don't have any errors in our model. Hasn't uh, predicted anything. Um, uh, predicted everything correctly. So um, now uh, this saved model can be loaded uh, later on or it can be converted to uh, TensorFlow Lite or TensorFlow uh, JavaScript. I'm not gonna be going into detail on uh, these ones, you can check it out on your own using the uh, student version over here. But yeah, that's those are the basics of uh, transfer learning. At, as like all knowledge, um, this applies to all the different kinds of knowledge. You can go into more detail on transfer learning and all, and um, um, 
yeah, there's, um, I went a little bit more into the depth of transfer learning today. Yeah, there's uh, even more out, out there. So uh, just, yeah, just go ahead and check it. So yeah, that's the end of the session. So yeah, um, there's gonna be homework, as I said before, just fill this uh, student version, version uh, transfer learning with Hub to the best of your ability. And uh, yeah, so that's it guys, thanks.